G'day guys, Jeff here, and I have a guest with me. I actually uh, ran a little competition for the premium members of Hoppet. They're people who support running the web servers because they do actually cost quite a bit of money for the bandwidth we're chewing up, which is awesome. And uh, I had I had a few of these members go through and tell me about their YouTube channels so I could select one, look at some of their videos, and uh, you know if I like what I see, to uh, give them a shout out on my channel and uh, let you guys know about someone who I think's bringing the goods to YouTube. And uh, the person I have with me is Jason or Sergeant Merrill on his YouTube channel. How you doing? How's it going, guys? So, yeah, give us a little bit of a background. Uh, you were in the army. Um, you're now out, but give us a bit of background uh, to the listeners on your your army days and uh, how that applies to your YouTube channel, perhaps. Okay. Well, I spent uh, eight years in the army, and uh, I was trained as a 46 Quebec, uh, which is a public affairs specialist or journalist, and uh, I think that has helped me out a lot. Uh, and commentating, and I just started in December, so I'm very new. But to say how the Army has helped me uh, in being a commentator, I'm going to say that first. Uh, I was trained at the Def Defense Information School, or DINFOS, and uh, that's obviously equipped me with some skill sets that I think facilitates a commentary. I learned Photoshop, how to write clearly, and really how to tackle complicated subjects, and I think that's been a big help on some of my topics, uh, especially when it comes to how complicated Call of Duty can get. And, uh, and second, I spent my ne nearly my entire military career working under military intelligence, and uh, two years of which were in South Korea. And it was funny because uh, me and Sazbin were just talking about how uh, we spent some time in Seoul. So um, a lot of mil other military commentators, I think, will say that their experience doesn't always translate into compatible gaming strategies. And for the most part, I think they're right. Uh, the mechanics of a game is so much different than real life. I mean, you get hit in bullet with a bullet in real life, and uh, you're just going to be done. There's no respawning there. <laughs> but I can say that uh, human intelligence is always going to translate, and I think uh, that is what has helped me. That will always follow the same patterns, uh, and that you can always translate into competitive gaming. So... Um, I think that... So, go ahead. So in some of those, then, so you... you, you uh, I, I kind of I tend to agree with you from the people I know who are in the military, but you know some tactics and strategy translate, but the psychology of it most certainly translates. Like if you pop your head up and you see someone looking at you dead in the eye, um, you kind of not want to pop your head up in the same spot again because they're expecting that. Um, you know they may also be looking to the left or right, but more so most right-handers will look t you know from where you were and then to the right. So you're better off moving to your right, which happens to be their left and then taking another look for that shot. So exactly. tell me about some of the psychology and how that might replay in, uh, or translate into gaming. Well, what I, what I try and do, especially in my PSYOP series, which is uh, psychological operations, an actual branch uh, in the military, is, uh, is try and take a, a look at what people are doing and uh, turn it into strategies. And I'm using a lot of my Photoshop know-how and really breaking it down and trying to clearly communicate uh, you know, what people are thinking why they're thinking that way and what you can do to take advantage of it. Right. So in layman's terms, guys, um, Sergeant Merrill does what I do with the overlays and, you know, for instance, Team Art, you know, he does that, he does that quite well and he has a knack for explaining himself, which I think is a lot of that journalist background as well. Um, so outside of that being unique on your channel, I recommend that everyone goes and uh, checks out his channel, link in the description. And I'm actually going to leave a video untainted that Sergeant Merrill gave me on the psychology or the art of uh, the art of multi-killing. Um, I believe that's the video we're watching, is that correct? I think it that's is. That's correct. Alright, so I'll play that in its entirety and uh, guys go and check out his channel and subscribe. You've got a really good commentator coming up uh, through the ranks here. Anyway, uh, Jason, thanks for joining me. Thank you. Really appreciate the opportunity. No problem. Sleek, you guys. Blood, blood, sex and danger. Blood, just sex and danger. It ain't no stranger to an airborne ranger. It ain't no stranger to an Welcome back to another episode of PsyOps, guys. This is Jason, also known as Sergeant Merrill on Xbox Live and by my fellow veteran community. If you're new to my channel, be sure to check out the first PsyOps video. You can find it in my channel list. These videos are all about getting your head in the game and giving you guys the brain food to overwhelm those opposing forces. Today we're going to be talking about the art of killing multiple targets. A lot of people complain that it's very difficult in this Call of Duty, but I'm here to tell you that there is an art to it. And if you prioritize your targets and play smart, you can take on a lot more engagements that are stacked in the enemy's favor. 
So let's rewind this and get started on the easiest way to get multiple kills, which is to get behind the enemy. That's very important, guys. Getting multiple kills when engaging an enemy that is prepared for you is possible, but you don't have that 3 to 5 second cushion time that you can get when flanking them. But we'll get to that later. When you successfully flank the enemy, it's a great feeling. You already know you're going to get one or two kills, but exercise some patience in this situation. Here I already see an easy kill right here, but I'll wait a second to see exactly what I'm dealing with. I know that once I fire my weapon, I risk someone turning around and changing the way I can get, engage the situation. So take the time to prioritize your targets in your head. Here's a quick list to keep in mind when flanking, and I'm going to show it in execution here in a second. First off, you're going to identify who poses the largest threat once you begin to engage. This rule is going to remain constant throughout the engagement, so always try to reevaluate who poses a threat after each kill. You're then going to identify and switch fire to the targets that are closest to each other, which is going to lead into your third thing that you're going to do, which is systematically switch between hip fire and aiming down the sights while maintaining fire. So it's good to use an automatic weapon, preferably an SMG. Uh, here I'm using the AK-74U, but you can really use any number of automatic weapons for this purpose. And fourth, once all enemies are down, go ahead and seal off an avenue of approach with a claymore as they come back for their revenge kills. Now back to the situation in front of us. I see this guy heading down the hall, but I'm waiting a second to see just exactly what I'm dealing with. From the looks of it, I got a guy running toward Bravo and at least one person already on it, which I can tell because he's popping off shots on the radar. At first thought, it would seem best to rush for the most kills and just knock out the guys on Bravo first. But that would leave this guy open to come back at me, and with this wall concealing his movement, I don't know which route is going to take to do it. So I feel he poses the largest threat once I begin to engage, so I'm going to take him out first. Now once I engage this guy, I know that I only have a small window before the enemy catches on that I flank them, so I have to move quickly. I identify the targets that are closest together after this, and I aim down my sights and start firing. Once that target first goes down, keep firing, come out of ads, and adjust your aim while firing at the hip to the next target. This assures that a few of your bullets will strike the other player while you center your aim, and once you feel comfortable that the screen is centered on him, go ahead and push back into aiming down the sights. When successfully flanking, you usually have enough time to repeat this process until you've wiped everyone out. If someone is completely clueless though, like this guy right here, you can just run up and knife them too, saving yourself some ammo. After you're done, don't forget to leave them a little present in the form of a claymore for when they come back to get you. Now acquiring multiple kills when rolling up on an enemy that is prepared for you requires you to be a little quicker and have a good aim. But the same process can be followed. The only difference is that you're going to have to take advantage of some of the cover around you and reevaluate threats much more quickly in order to stay alive. Here I'm only coming up on two enemy players but they're ready for me so I only have a split second to prioritize my targets. Both seem like equal threats at the moment but I end up aiming for the player on the ground first because he is the most difficult target to transition to after I start receiving fire. If I went for the kneeling player first, he would be the easiest to kill, but I would be less likely to hit the player on the ground with hip fire when I transition. Another huge help to accomplishing multiple kills is learning to drop shot. I didn't do that here, but doing that could give you those crucial seconds that you may need to transition to the next threat by making yourself a smaller target. The best way to incorporate this method is to switch your button layout to tactical. It's going to swap your knife and your crouch buttons. It's going to be a pain at first, but it really helps incorporate an effective strategy in dealing with multiple opponents. Now for this last example, I'm going to be showing what you can do when you're rolling up on a large chunk of the opposing forces. There are some extra steps to take and there are a lot of risks throughout the entire process. With practice though, you can do some incredible things against a lot of people. First, you need to realize that you're coming up on them. Otherwise, you're going to be like a deer in headlights and you're going to get mowed down by four guys. Here I noticed a large amount of enemies heading up that hill behind Bravo because of our UAV. Now because this is a narrow fighting space and I know that they're already expecting an engagement to go on in front of them, I have to establish some crowd control first. For that, you can use a stun grenade or flash grenades, but I prefer stun grenades because they go out quicker and they limit their movement, which is going to help me out in a second and I'll show you how. Before we get to that though, just like before, you also need to identify some cover that you'll be able to bounce in and out from as the bullets come your way. Lucky for me, I have these sandbags to the left and they cannot be penetrated by bullets, so they're going to be the perfect cover for this engagement. So there goes the stun grenade, and since that doorway is so narrow, I'm going to pull out one of my favorite toys, which is the tomahawk. With three people crowding that door, it would be really hard for me to miss this thing, and two great things are about this technique. One, it instantly takes someone out of the fight while limiting my exposure to about half a second. And two, I still have a full clip to deal with the other two. My aim isn't that great in this one, but the person I decided to target first starts to retreat, and I start receiving some serious fire from the other person. 
This is where you need to constantly reevaluate who poses the largest threat as the engagement goes on because I'm getting my ass kicked by this guy. Luckily, I was able to refocus my fire, take him down, and come out on top. That's going to be all I have for this video, guys. I really hope it helps. A lot of this may seem over the top, but believe me, if you keep it in the back of your mind while you're playing, it's going to become second nature. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to rate and comment and leave me any critique that you might have so we can make this thing better as it moves forward. Good hunting, guys. This is Sergeant Merrill, out here.